Hey guys, it's Craig Turner Bullock from Unleashed Education here and you have tuned in to an editing toolbox video. In these quick videos, Charlotte and I share a tip, trick or technique that we hope will help to make your life a little bit easier when it comes to Lightroom and Photoshop. In today's video, I thought I'd talk to you a little bit about banding. How to deal with banding is a question that has come up a couple of times recently in our Unleashed Education Facebook group. So I thought I'd share a few things that you can do to help minimize the effect of banding or remove it completely. First of all, let's talk about what banding is. I've got to be honest, I really struggled to find a sample image with banding in it of my own. But when I was looking for the images that might be susceptible to banding, this one did come up and it did actually have banding on it. Although once it had actually fully rendered, the banding disappeared. I did, however, manage to take a screenshot before it did render. So I'm actually going to use the screenshot to show you how to reduce it afterwards. Banding is basically a separation of the colors in smooth kind of areas of plain color. So very susceptible to happen in blue skies and things like solid colored studio backgrounds, you'll often see banding happening as well. And if we go back to the screenshot I took, you'll notice here that you can just see that kind of breakdown and these stripes of color where the tones are not a gradient and they're separating out. That's basically what banding is. Now, the good news about this is, is that most of the time it is only apparent on screen. When you actually come to print out these images, if you're printing work for clients or for yourself, then you won't actually have the banding in the prints. But that's still not really an ideal solution, especially if you want to put them online in your portfolio or share them on social media. So for that purpose, you do need really to sort it out. A couple of things to help prevent it from happening in the first place. First of all, always make sure that you're shooting in RAW. This is going to give you the most amount of data in your files. The second thing is that if you notice banding on an image, always just check it at 100%. So if we're in Lightroom here, we can either click on the image to zoom in up here in the top in your navigator, you can just go to 100% if you're not already at 100%. And then you can just check if the banding disappears or not. Sometimes just viewing it at full size can just show you the full render of the image. Um, it does seem to be that you do see banding when the image hasn't actually rendered properly on screen. So once you've got a fully zoomed in to 100% and rendered image, if the banding is gone, you shouldn't have a problem and it should be fine. And then the next couple of things are really editing things. So we're going to jump over to Photoshop now. In Photoshop, we want to make sure, first of all, that we're editing either a PSD or a TIFF file. Again, that retains more information and we have more data to play with and it helps us to be able to remove the banding more easily. Second thing is to make sure that you are working with a 16-bit file. If we go up to the top here, we go image, mode, and you've got your bits here. So usually the default's 8 bits. If you change it to 16-bit, it's not really going to change the appearance of the image on the screen. But when we edit this, it is going to give us more depth in the image to play with, more colors, more tonal range. And then the third thing is that we can actually make the layer a smart object as well. Again, it just helps retain information. And it also means that we can go back and change things later on if we need to. So to change it to a smart object, we right click here and just convert to smart object. And then you have this little image that uh, indicates it's a smart object. If you've been working on an image and then banding actually appears, what you can sometimes find is that when you've got an image with multiple layers, probably the image hasn't rendered properly. So you can flatten the image or make a copy of the image and flatten it and see if then it renders and the banding disappears then too. Assuming you've done all of that, and you've still got banding to deal with, let's have a look at a couple of ways that you can remove and reduce it in Photoshop now. You can use all of these methods, 
or you might find that just one or maybe two of these methods actually get rid of it and you don't need to do some of the others. First thing I want to do is duplicate the layer and I'll just press Command and J to do that. And I really think making a mask first is the best way. So I want to mask the dog. We'll just go um, select and select subject. Now that's given us a reasonable outline here. I do want to refine that a little bit more. So now we go back to select and we go select and mask. Now I'll zoom in a little bit here. And what we can do is we can click on the refine edge brush tool and we can just go around these outlines. Now I'm not actually too worried. I don't need to do this too accurately because I might even end up just going a little bit wider than the dog anyway because the banding is not right up to the dog I don't think. New layer, layer mask is your output and OK. So now I can turn off the background layer and we can see just the dog is masked. If I click on the mask and grab my brush tool, I've got a white brush because we're using a black mask and I want to reveal more of the image. So I'm just going to brush along these bits of grass and things like that just so they're not hidden. Okay, so now I'm going to duplicate this layer and I'll click on the mask and I'm going to invert the mask. So now I have a layer with the dog and I have a layer with the sky. From there, my first step is going to be to add some blur. So making sure that I'm clicked on the layer and not the actual mask, I'm going up to filter, blur. I'm going to use Gaussian blur on this one. And you'll see we've got a default here of 10.1 pixels, which is probably what I used the last time I was editing. So if we take this down, you can see how it kind of affects the image. So basically it's just blurring out the sky until these gradients merge into one. Once we've got to a point where the banding has almost disappeared, I can just press OK. On this mask, we now have haloing around the dog to deal with. So this is where I will grab my brush again and I'll just kind of tidy up that haloing just to keep those edges nice and neat. And we can't really see any of the banding here. That's the first thing that we can do. So that is adding a blur. The next thing we can do is actually add noise. So adding a bit of noise to this banding area is also going to help us to disguise it. So in filters again, we can go noise and add noise. To get the best results from this, I would recommend checking the monochromatic box just to keep the noise unit more uniform and also with uniform here as well. And then we can increase. So if we increase it, you can see how the noise kind of um, forms. Obviously, we want to keep that very low and not super, super obvious. Let's try um, 0.6. That might be just enough there. Yeah, I think that's helping. Let's go 0.8, maybe see a little bit more. I'm starting to see the noise appearing, so I don't want it super obvious, so I think that will be enough. So if we take a look, if I turn off these layers, turn off the noise, turn off the blur, you can see here, there's our banding, there's our blur, there's our noise. Each step reduces it a little bit more. I hope that you can see that clearly, because with the compression on YouTube videos, you might actually see banding anyway which is um, a bit frustrating, but hey, there we go. That's just how these things work when we're streaming. So those are your best options. The final way is simply just to use a new blank layer, grab the brush tool, grab some of this blue color and just paint. And again, you can reduce the opacity slightly so you still see a little bit of that gradient coming through before you start to see any banding. Okay, there we go, guys. A few tips on managing, minimizing, and removing banding from your images. I hope this one's been really helpful for you to watch. And if you have any questions or comments, just leave them in the boxes below and I'll make sure I answer those. And I will see you again for my next editing toolbox video. Thanks for watching.